Hello and welcome back to another episode of the War Within Alpha Dungeon International. I'm here, Sean, with your my co-host, Rolly. Rolly, how you doing? I'm doing great, Sean. How are you? I'm great. I'm great. That is a mouthful, trying to remember what we have called these things. <laughs> uh, but we, here we are. We are getting ready to dive into another Cinderbrew Meadery. This one should be a good time. We're just waiting for the DC bug to get fixed up, and then we will see our first pull. Uh, the Cinderbrew Meadery, Rolly, I don't know how much time you've spent in here. I like to call it Knockback Academy. <laughs> Because uh, that is a every, good one. Yeah, every every pack in here seems to have a knockback, especially this first room where you're going to see a lot of pulls happening and people just flying all over the place. So it's very important that you're particular about where you position your body so that you don't get accidentally flung into another pack. As we can see here, they're just waiting for their fifth member to come in from the DC, which really slows things down in these dungeons. But uh, hopefully that'll be fixed before the alpha goes live. And they are now in the match here, and it looks like they're about to get started. This first pull coming up should be a big one. And as you can see, the tank is moving to the left of the room and pulling a lot of these mobs in together. Now, these thick boys are going to be the ones that do a slam on the group. So there'll be a lot of group-wide damage coming out here, as well as knockbacks to everybody, uh, which makes it a lot harder for a healer if you uh, want to be healing everybody to keep them grouped up. Um, but again, we see here big numbers on the screen, a lot of damage going out. Rolly, is this not just a dream for a rep paladin? Yeah, I mean, big open rooms with uh, lots of mobs. There's, there's nothing, nothing that gets me up in the morning like that. <laughs> just like the, nothing, just quite like that. There's also a mini boss that patrols around this room here, uh, Chef something something, and you see him now up at the bar. He's going to make his way back down towards the middle of the room. This group seems to have things positioned pretty tightly on the left side, and I suspect what they'll do next is go for a larger pull that takes the rest of the room from the right side and the middle uh, before they get ready to pull this first boss here in Cinderbrew Meadery. There are four bosses in this dungeon. This is the longest dungeon in the current alpha set, um, but it still usually clocks in at about 15 minutes. Uh, Roly, how are you feeling about the fast dungeons so far we've seen in the War Within Alpha? I love it. I, I'm all for uh, shorter, faster dungeons. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, a lot of what, you know, if we look at like, you know, things like the Great Push or the MDI, it's like it's all about speed. It's all about that quick pace. And I think when getting to 30 minutes is a little on the high end side. So these 15 minute dungeons are a uh, breath of fresh air. Yeah, and we're seeing a lot of damage coming out here in this group right now. The Hunter has dropped down to sub-10%, but the Priest is able to bring him back up and keep him alive. This pull is still going strong. They haven't faltered yet, and it looks like, yes, this tank is getting rid of the chain in these last few trash packs while the damage is still being healed up from the last pull. This is a wild group. They are very excited here. They're obviously looking to go for that timer and hit the gold on this dungeon. And, uh, really, I'm with you. I think shorter dungeons... I think that's my favorite song, shorter, faster, quicker, uh, easier. Those are uh, those are definitely the way to go. Give me that Yeezy. We need it. Uh, it's a lot of fun. And again, we see the Priest's Health dip super low here after one of those AOE slams coming out from the from the packs. And it looks like we're pulling the boss with oh, waiting for the, the health to be topped up here. This is wild. I wonder what they'll do for positioning. This boss has a few mechanics. And it looks like, yes, they are pulling to the door. So this boss has an intermission phase. And if you're similar to... If you're familiar with Soul Render Dormazane, and one of the strats was to tank him near the entrance of the room so that it is longer for him to run to his intermission phase. Uh, you can get a little bit of extra damage out there, cheese a little bit out. And while they're fighting right now, you see this boss does throw, throw some air of denial on the ground in the form of these gold pools. Now we're heading into the intermission. Roll, do you want to break down the intermission for us? Yeah, so here he readies up a bunch of uh, beer, essentially, and we, we have these angry... Uh, patrons that will send out they're throwing out their empty mugs because they want more beer out mm -hmm. of the team so our goal here is to satiate their thirst mm. by running over some beers to them excellent i love it uh, i think we'll probably see some of play in the future where uh the tank and healer maybe are the ones responsible for running the beer while dps just pelts into the boss uh, we'll see how that develops as the course of the alpha goes on. And you can see now after the intermission ending, the tank is deciding to just keep the boss here planted at the bar where the majority of the team was as there will not be a second round of that. And they make quick work of the bartender here in Cinder Brew Meadery as we get to get rid of the head into the only hallway without knockbacks um, in this place. But instead it has something, a little something called failed batches. Roly, have you had much experience with the failed batches here? I have had plenty of experience with the failed batches, yes. 
So uh, what the failed batches are, for those of you watching at home, if you're not sure, one of these mobs here will cast a, a failed batch. They'll throw it out. And you can see one here on the screen right now, but marked with a skull by the quick fingers of the main tank here in this group. And uh, you have to d delete that uh, mob before it explodes and does AOE damage to the group. I believe it can be line of sighted, but trying to coordinate that kind of mastery in an uh, alpha pug is a, is a lot more than, than you really should be asking for. And we can see here we're going for a mid pull in the hallway. And the last pack has been pulled in by the Evoker to chain this pull into a bigger pull. It looked like they were looking for a little bit more mobs to pad that damage and get it up there. Evoker threat Early on in a pull is extremely dangerous, so it's kind of nice to have them pull the mobs for you because then they're already focused on them, and you can just work at pulling them back off as a tank. And we're now clearing up the last of this pack. These big boys will pick a target and run, and then the farther they run, the more damage is done when they hit the end of the wall. So ideally, as a DPS, you're going to want to position yourselves so that you're between them and a close wall. This dungeon, I think so far in the pack, has the most positional requirements of DPS players. Normally, it's just the tanks that have to worry about mob positioning. But here in Cinderbrew Meadery, the DPS also have to be cognizant of where they're standing. Because if they're standing where these ones are right now, you can have one of these mobs run all the way down the hall. There's going to be a big burst of damage here. But it looks like they're going to be able to get through it with a quick rally. Some fast thinking by this tank. Roly, this is wild, wild stuff here. Yeah, I actually, I'm okay with this, giving the DPS a little more uh, responsibility than just tunnel visualing going burr all the time. I, I, I'm i for it. Excellent. Yeah, it, I think it's about time that the DPS had to do more than just spam buttons, uh, and I'm, I'm glad as well that Blizzard uh, has made this move. We're looking here to finish up this trash pack, and we're going to be pulling the trash in the next boss room. As you can see, this team is moving through at a good clip in the metery here, uh, making their way to the second boss downtown, and they are just about to pull that trash. Now, some tanks I've seen have been pulling these packs outside of the room and using a line of sight feet. Uh, to get more mobs in on the pull, but it looks like this one has decided to stay in the room for the fight, which could be dangerous because you will see this big boy charge across the room and it opens up the potential to pull more mobs in. Now, there is also the possibility to use that as a delayed pull tactic to let them charge across and bring in more packs to keep the pad going, keep that funnel damage happening. And as you can see here, more explosions as they hit the wall and this healer is able to easily top this up. Roly, how have you seen healers performing in the alpha uh, and which one do you think is a sneaky uh, lead for meta at the point at the moment you know i i actually i feel like healing right now overall in the alpha isn't really that great even as a retribution paladin uh i like to do a little bit of off healing to help my healer out uh even my heals don't really feel very strong at the moment however mm. I was able to play with a Disc Priest who absolutely pumped on the damage meters. So right now, if I if I had any if I had to put any money on anything, I would put it on Disc Priest. Yeah, I like that. You know, Disc Priests are definitely in need of some lithium right now because they are far too high to be uh, doing the damage that they're doing. We got to bring that stuff back down to normal. You can see here the boss has spawned IPA, the the second boss in the Cinderbrew Meadery. If you go left. Uh, has spawned. They're just clearing up that last trash pack to kill that time while waiting for the boss to spawn. This boss has some mechanics, as all bosses do. The one that you're going to watch out for mainly is he will spray the ground with some gold, uh, golden honey drops, and it will also spawn three bubbles. If the bubbles reach the boss, they will do an explosion of damage, and they will give the boss an absorption shield. So you can see here, the red swirls are spawning those bubbles. It's on the tank to make sure that they properly kite the boss away from there and don't let them get any stacks of that bubble uh, shield, the bubble bubble. Uh, and it looks like, yes, this tank has once again shown that they're able to do that masterfully. Fun fact, some DPS prefer to ignore the bubbles and hard focus the boss. Uh, this is fine as long as you can kill the boss before the bubbles enrage. Little known fact, those little bubbles of honey do have an enrage. And when they enrage, they speed up and zip to the boss and all explode on impact. And it will potentially cause a group-wide wipe. But we see we are down with IPA and we're moving over to the next side of the Cinderbrew Meadery, which is my favorite side of the Meadery, bees! Rolly, how do you feel about the bees section? I I love these little fire bees. They're they're just so adorable. Yeah, I love them. I mean, I I feel like it's a weird mixed message being sent from Blizzard because, you know, 
I don't know about you guys, but I try to save the bees mm-hmm. as much mm-hmm. as I can. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you guys are big TikTok fans, but you know it's it's always a wonderful day of saving the bees, and uh, our characters are just coming in here and just demolishing these bees. <laughs> yeah, I'm a big fan of the pollinators. I'm a friend of the pollinators. I let my lawn grow long for the pollinators. Uh, I leave my dishes in the sink for the pollinators, and there's a pile of clothes behind me. You guessed it for the pollinators. Uh, we are seeing now this trash here. I do want to highlight a little bit of this trash in this hallway because this trash is wild. Uh, So we have the brand ambassadors, which are the big hyenas you see in the middle, and they will hit you with an AOE that will stun you. So it's important to get out of that uh, before it goes off. As well, we have the bee wranglers who are shooting their bee zooka. That's the big red bar you see. Now you can line of sight that through a wall, but ideally you don't want to get hit by it because it, you guessed it, has a knockback and does damage. So that's something you want to avoid. And the last two things in this hallway that are important is the bees kill a cast of final sting can potentially one shot a cloth wearer and it does a huge chunk of damage on anybody else uh, so you want to either find a way to stun those just as they're dying to prevent that cast or uh, pop a big defensive for it and then the last thing that is in this hallway that i think is really neat is the uh, the casters here will do an aoe on the ground that you can kick you can interrupt it before it goes off if it goes off you see yellow globs hit the ground Getting hit by a yellow glob puts a stacking slow on you uh, and can freeze you in amber. And I think it's great because it incentivizes people to use their interrupts because the mechanic, if you don't interrupt, doesn't kill you. It just annoys you. It's just an incredibly frustrating spell. Um, So hopefully that incentivizes people to use their kick as we see them wrapping up this AOE spawn of bees here in this hallway. Rolly, we're getting ready for the next boss. Have you fought the bee boss yet? I have fought the bee boss, and uh, I I really enjoy it. I enjoy the the little bee ha that you got to do when you uh, when you ride the bees into the uh, again into their death uh, into the exploding barrels. I think it's a really fun mechanic. Yeah, it's a great time. We're coming up to this boss here. We will probably see this group jump down and skip a couple of trash bags here because jumping over the railing has sort of become the go to on the alpha, especially in the dungeon and dojo war. Sorry, especially in the War within Alpha International. Um, so I expect that that is how we'll see this group go down there. And when they pull this B-Boss, the B-Boss has two mechanics to watch out for. Number one, he'll summon bees out of these barrels. You DPS the bees down, and then somebody can ride those bees into a barrel to stop the barrels from summoning more bees. Uh, and then while that's happening, the main tank will be getting a cast on them that leaves behind a puddle of honey that is just an area of denial. So it's bees in your bees we heard you like bees so we put some bees in your bees so you could be while you're being it's uh it's a lot of fun here and we are about to pull that boss as we clean up this last trash pack most groups that we've seen so far uh in the alpha have been just completely ignoring the bee mechanic and just hard blasting this guy down um he does hurt a little bit there's a bit of a sting to his attacks but other than that it is a fairly simple fight This is where you'll see a lot of folks send their lust. We can see those barrels spawning now as they're tanking him over to the side. The reason the tank has him here is so that when his area of denial comes up, it's not stacked right underneath everybody. Oh, but he charges in to get a bee, and he's going to drop that honey right underneath the group. Oh, that was a huge tactical mistake there by the tank, but it looks like they've been able to recover quite easily as they move the bee boss down along the wall, and his pushback has begun. Rolly, do you know if you stand directly under him, does the pushback get negated like the dragon boss in... Uh, dark heart ticket i have no idea sean but the one thing that i do know is this tank likes to punish his healer i've seen him multiple times just charge right in with the healer still such low mana even right now it's uh man is a crutch that uh we shouldn't have to live by if you have five percent you have enough five percenters rise up uh but i agree it's important uh you want a tank and a healer to have that connection and this b goes down this team gets an a plus for the work on the b boss and we are now getting ready to clear the last two trash packs before heading into the final boss of the Cinder Brew Meadery. And we are cruising. We are just under 15 minutes on the timer. This might be the fastest time we've seen this dungeon get completed than yet. Rolly, have you seen a faster time on the Cinder Brew Meadery yet? I actually have. I got a chance to run this dungeon a few times, and uh, we, we cleared it pretty quick. You're a liar? <laughs> 
Before you fight the last boss, you have to take this little ride up on the B line. Now, it's important to note, you can see the tanks health here dipping incredibly low because there is a dot that is placed on them by those Bs in the doorway that, uh, if stacked up too high, could potentially kill the tank before they get up here to the last boss of the dungeon. We are going to pull this four-pack of henchmen who, uh, they start off as yes-men, then they become agreeable men. It's a fun little mechanic that as each one dies, they sort of absorb the power of the next one uh, and they build themselves up. And we are seeing them engage now. And then we'll be pulling the final boss roll. Do you want to break down the last boss of this dungeon for us? Yeah, so this last boss will spawn, uh, you guessed it, a bunch of barrels all around them. And um, the DPS will get a basically a circle around them. And what they want to do is take those bar is take that circle to one of the barrels. Now, what it will what they'll have to do is wait there until it drops the swirly on the floor. And once that swirly erupts, that barrel will then erupt and shoot out uh, fire globules in four different directions. As you can see here, the tank also has a frontal, and that barrel got hit with that tank frontal. Uh, what you want to do eventually is once you get to the, well, let's call it second phase of the boss, any remaining barrels that have not been uh, exploded will explode all at once. So you end up being in a bullet hell situation, essentially. Do you think there's a world where you leave all of the barrels and everybody just stands on the table to avoid getting hit by the mechanic? I think if you're a true gamer, that's the only way to play this boss. <laughs> the only way to play. I agree 100%. And this boss goes down. They've made quick work of the final boss here in Cinderbrew Meadery. Uh, what a fast, hit, fantastic job, Roly. Final thoughts on the Cinderbrew Meadery dungeon. I enjoy it. It's a, I think it's a very fun dungeon. Uh, we get a good mix of mechanics, and uh, I, I, think it's a, I think it's a smash hit. Yep, 10 out of 10. Uh, would run again. Thanks for tuning in, folks, to the War Within Alpha International. We will see you in the next one. Uh, when we get a new build of the Alpha.